welcome to Josh's House of Nerd Nation. I'm Josh, and I welcome you to the podcast. Grab a cold evergreen gobble of blue milk and make yourself comfortable here at my House of Nerd. Now for tonight's sponsor. Hey, are you a man? Are you a man that likes chains? Do you have chestal hair? Well, if you answer d- to yes to one or all of these, then come down to Raul's Chestal chains Rama, where we have the chains for you. Big ones, little ones, gold ones, and sparkly ones, and many, many more. All here at Raul's chains Rama. Also, find us in the Yellow Pages. Wait, there are, there are Yellow Pages? I was about to <laughs> say, I know they're out of business. business. <laughs> I knew if I put that in there, you'd I guess this you is a 90s it. film, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yep, it is. <laughs> uh, Robin Williams name. inspired me yes. in this movie. <laughs> he can do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. Today on the podcast, we are on the topic of the month, which is movies from plays. And today we are talking about Crit's Pick, the 1996 movie, The Birdcage, starring Robin Williams, Nathan Lane, Hank Azaria, Dan Futterman, Gene Hackman, Diane Weiss, Weiss, Weiss and Callista Weiss. Flockhart. Yeah. <laughs> this movie is about a gay cabaret owner and his drag queen companion who agree to put up a false straight front so that their son can introduce them to his fiance's right wing moralistic parents. This is off IMDb. <laughs> Let's talk about that movie. <laughs> so I I will say that this is probably one of my all time favorite movies we've ever done for the podcast. Really? I, That's awesome. I've and never seen, seen this before. before right? No, oh, I nice. hadn't seen it before. I was really, so, really interested in what you were th- going to think about it. I, I, I it absolutely love it. And and right now yeah. it's, it's actually made its way into my top movies list, like <laughs> top, top comedies. Wow. Like it, it's flattered. so well done. So it is, it is really well done. I really, really enjoyed every minute of it. There wasn't a there wasn't a point where it was slow to me. There wasn't a point where I put anything down. Like I really, just really enjoyed this film. You know what's funny, John? I when I watched this first time, I actually saw this in the theater with some friends. We didn't even know what it was about. We just like the movie we wanted to go to was sold out, and everybody's like, oh, I don't really. We really still want to watch a movie, so let's go to the. We'll go to this Birdcage one. And we saw, and at the time I was just kind of like, yeah, it was pretty funny. It's Robin Williams, Nathan Lane. I mean, how can you go wrong? You know, and, and I did like it at the time, but it was like more of my age. I was mm-hmm. just like, yeah, it was cool. It was good. And rewatching it again, man, I found myself laughing way more this time oh, yeah. than I did originally when I, I first originally saw it. I don't think I would have enjoyed this when I was in high school. I don't, I don't think I would have. And that's when I saw it was when I was in high yeah, school. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I would have had the, the life experience necessary to really enjoy this film. Or, you know, my horizons at the time were pretty closed off, a very conservative area. So I don't know that I could have properly enjoyed this film, but now watching it, holy crap, so many good one-liners, mm-hmm. so so much. It's just, it's so well done. I absolutely love it. I'm, I'm stoked that you enjoyed it because it was, of the three that I put on there, this one was probably, I don't want to say the most out there, but uh, it was definitely the, it, it was definitely an interesting, like when I was trying to pick out the movies, uh, you know, my different choices and stuff like that. I was like, what really pushed me over the top was, Robin Williams in it because he's great, mm-hmm. but then Nathan Lane's performance is just oh man, I mean defining. I it, it, it was amazing, and I, and I think it's worth noting that Nathan Lane in real life is gay. Yes, yep. um, he actually came out after or publicly came out after this film was released. Oh, I, I didn't was, know that. It was ninety I was, I was it was ninety-seven or ninety-nine. So I it was, was after was. this film release. Yeah, that's yeah. In, that's really interesting. But but at, what, at the same time, it was not as I mean, even like this movie talks about, it was not socially as socially acceptable as it is now uh, to come out. You know, back then it was a big deal. I mean, a way big. De- it's still. I mean, it's deal. still a big but, deal. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, it's it's not the the stigma is not there these days as much as it was back then. I mean, it was there a lot back then. You know. And I, I really think it lent a lot to his performance. Some of it, some of his lines when they're talking about um, w- one of the scenes that just absolutely floored me. If we if we get into it, is when he comes in dressed in the suit, mm-hmm. and yeah. he gives that whole it's like I don't have makeup on, like I don't have you know my all my rings. I don't have like what is what's so different? Why am I different? 
Yeah. Right. And holy cow, what a powerful scene to illustrate that it doesn't matter. Like, no, he's 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 fundamentally a different person. Yeah. And what a powerful scene that he just acted the hell out of. Um, it was probably one of my all time favorite scenes from that movie. It was just it was such a powerful moment to realize and, and to make that connection. It's like, yeah, he doesn't have his flamboyant trappings, but no, he's he's still fundamentally who he is. Right. Yeah. How can pink, pink socks change that? Right. Like it, that was, that was that scene that I, I really took it back. Like they just kept looking at him with those socks. Like, you know, what's wrong with the socks? I look good. Don't I, you know? And, and they just kept going, looking at him like, you know, no, they're going to notice even with the pink socks, you know? So, <laughs> you know, you just really felt for him. And, and this whole movie just really made me feel for the characters. Uh, well, yeah, a I lot the... of them. What's that? Rick Crit? Yeah, I was just I was thinking that uh, this the it's interesting that they made the heart of the script, um, you know Nathan's character, like he's yeah. the he's probably the he's the center of the film really, like mm-hmm. from what the film is oh, saying, it's like he can't you know as much as he's sw- supposed to be a great performer, this type of performance is just kind of I mean he doesn't even know that that you know he's doing anything different necessarily. And the way he he pulled that off uh, from an acting standpoint is amazing. Yeah, it was it was so well done. And I think I think the film like even tells you that Nathan's Lane character should be your center of attention from right. the very get go. When it's like you know it's all about Star Star Starina or Starlina. Yeah, I can't remember Starina. Starina. Um, so it, <laughs> I mean, the film even cheekily tells you like, no, your attention should be here. Like this is this is this is the star of the show. So well, pay attention in, here. Yeah, in the sense that also the script makes just about everybody else kind of assholery, especially uh, uh, Val the son and yeah, uh, son, old oh, man, and uh, um, uh, Robin Williams' character, um, because like he's he's trying to do his best to kind of you know uh, go down the middle of this issue of letting his uh, you know loved one be themselves while also kind of holding up the expectations of his only son, you know? So it, it, but it still comes across like now it, it, then it didn't really come across much. Now it does come across as like this character is kind of written like an asshole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I do, I do appreciate some of the lines that he delivered. Um, one of the, before when, when they're talking in the room, and he's going over all this stuff that's really over the top. And, you know, he's showing him the statues and Robin Williams character is just like, ex- you know, excuse me. I, 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 it took me 20 years to figure out who I was. Yeah. Yeah. And that like, was a good, that, scene. that was a really good scene. Yeah. But then the immediately washes back, you know, like, like crit said to kind of be middle of the road here and see if I can't do it all and, and accomplish this thing. Um, but that, that was a very powerful line. I mean, me. I really enjoyed that. it's powerful, but it's, it's also done in the vein, the, the tongue in cheek of like, just a com- they're offering a comedic, you know, yes, they're putting out a statement, but they're also setting up like a comedic something or other later too. Um, you know, which makes me think about, you know, setting up the whole, uh, the mom thing, you know, that they keep oh, everything was a in. setup. Everything yeah. was, everything right. was a setup and it was so well set up too. the the was it um argo i can't remember his name because you know i got stuck on spartacus, spartacus? yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay but how great is frank azaria oh my oh, gosh oh my goodness Jeez. he's so good he's in this amazing movie. but the the setup with the oh, shoes God. the setup with the cooking yeah. the the setup with um the the whole uh guatemalan thing it's just so <laughs> so well done and everything was a him setup, and a thong but, yeah, every it's like all the pool boys in Florida are gay. <laughs> that whole line there was was amazing. But oh my but God. everything in this film was was a setup. The the mom arriving late and mm-hmm. the uh, just everything, and it was so well done. It it's it's like a master class in Chekhov's guns. Well, I, I think I think that's why. Like, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this genre sort of genre thing um, is because since plays usually have to stand on their own narratively um, because the way they're structured with stages and stuff like that, I think they can make for better movies when the, when the play is correct, you know, well adapted. 
Mm -hmm. um, because all of that Chekhov's gun is that's the play, you know, that's, that's where they're coming Mm -hmm. from is, is that type of thing. So yeah, I, I think it's great. Yeah. I, no, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Josh. I would just, one thing I was going to say is, you know, the brightest p- the thing that really carries this whole movie. And we've talked about it this entire time, but I never realized it is that it's, it's character driven. I mean, if it wasn't for Robin Williams playing off of Nathan Lane mm-hmm. and, you know, I think they make an excellent comedy team. I mean, those yep. guys are just fantastic. Uh, Nathan Lane, you know, you could say playing by himself, but as a duo, as a comedy duo, oh my goodness, the the scene where um, they're running down the street and then he he pulls him into that um, he pulls him into that restaurant to kind of calm him down right. without the whole you know leaving thing or trying to get him to leave. And the whole, like, them sitting at the table and talking about the toast. And John and Wayne. And, yeah. and John Wayne. Oh, my goodness. That like, you just have to is... remember, there's always more toast. <laughs> oh, man. Like, it's, it's so well done. It's and, such a good scene. Uh, but, I'm just now realizing that John Wayne walks like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, so to, or or the one part, too, John, that he's just, like, when they're, like, shaking hands and stuff. Um, and then he's just, like... He's just like, how you doing? He says something to him. He's like, did I say that right? And he's like, I honestly don't know. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, like, I don't know. <laughs> we have to figure it out. Um, but I no, I, say, oh, sorry. I think Lane is such a, a synergistic actor. And what I mean by that is look at him across from um, Matthew Broderick and the mm-hmm. producers. Mm-hmm. Or was it Matthew Broderick and the producers? Or am I yeah. thinking something else? Okay, yeah. No, it yeah, was. It was. Um, and then him across from, I can't remember who it is, in Mouse Hunt. Um, mm-hmm. I have, I have, I'd have to figure that one out, but you, you look at them across these actors and to me, Nathan Lane's power as an actor is always just doubled by whoever he's across from. If they, if they, if they can, you know, if they have the acting chops to Lee Evans, that's who it is. Um, if they have the acting chops to take it out to me, he's just, he's someone that takes a really fantastic actor and is able to magnify their performance and just continue to be this this magnifying glass to be like, look, I am going to make them an even better actor in this scene. I'm going to make them, an e- you know, this scene even better. And I see that all the time with his with his movies and, you know, the things that he's been involved in. So that's yeah. why I think that's why I call him kind of like a synergistic actor to me. He, he's just someone that, you know, playing across from somebody in a tight role like, you know, Timon and Pumbaa. For heaven's mm-hmm. sakes, um, but playing across from someone in a very tight role where that duo is a main part of the film or play or whatever is where he just thrives. I think. Yeah, without a doubt, he is he is incredible. You know, um, and and one of the things that I I did when I was doing some reading on this, you know, a lot of people um, really um, applauded this movie, applauded him. Um, for bringing out a movie that was that really broke a lot of barriers. There wasn't a lot of movies. There's wasn't a lot of movies this time. I think somewhere around there, you still, you started to see still like two Wong Fu. Thanks for everything. Julie Newmar and, and things like that. If I remember, right, it's around that exact same time. And, but this one was truly like one of those movies that you just didn't see that often up until that point. And that was what people were applauding was just how kind of groundbreaking this movie was to talk about this topic. Well, on Um, top of that, like, yeah, mm -hmm. I was reading about it too. And, and it's interesting because it's like up to that point, um, you had, you know, gay people in gay characters in movies, Mm -hmm. but this was like one of the first ones where none of the gay characters had to die to teach a lesson or, um, it also ended on a positive note, like as far as like the people that are involved in the film and stuff like that, like it's, you know, I mean, coming out of the AIDS epidemic and everything else like that, I mean, you had Philadelphia and you had, you know, uh, awareness of raising movies before that, but they were all like really serious and really, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of trying to, you know, kind of elevate the knowledge of the movie going public. Mm. Whereas in this one was kind of more, it was a comedy and it, it had all this camp in it and it had everything in there, but it was also not denigrating. I guess is what I'd say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I see Good that. Uh, I absolutely agree with that. I, I feel like yes, there was there were stereotypes, but they did it in a you know no this this actually happens and we embrace it and 
you know, this is what it's like behind the scenes type deal. And I think it did a fantastic job of that, of, of just opening the door, I think. You know, this movie does kind of, you say stereotypes and all that stuff, you know, and it does use language that isn't used these days, you know, uh, to subs- uh, describe the gay community. But, you know, that's one thing I had to kind of remind myself as those are the words that were used at that time. And, you know, even though it was still a little shocking to me <laughs> to hear it, yeah. um, but at least, you know, they were getting good points across. They were, you know, and, and they were, I don't know, opening people's minds to, you know what? It's okay to be different. It's all right. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. You can love people, whether they're different, whether you come from different political sides, you know, no matter what your, your views are. Um, you know, I don't always share the same views as both of you guys and, but I love you guys and I, and I respect both you guys like highly in your opinions, even though mine might be counter. And that's the way that, you know, you, you got to look at this and, and that it, it just shows, I, I love that kind of message that comes from the, this movie is that the, the, you can come from different lifestyles and yet you can still be family. You can still be friends and you can still love each other, enjoy each other's company mm-hmm. and friendship well and, and crit mentioned it i i think the ending um needs a minute simply because as endings go i really enjoyed it because it wasn't an instant everything is all right and it wasn't a an instant oh it's you know the curtain call so everyone's friends everyone's okay no the senator is still the very conservative senator <laughs> you know but it, it sh- the, the ending itself before they did the whole little wedding thing in the credits um, sh- to me was, was an actual ending. It's like, no, this is how, if this, if this could ever actually happen in real life, this is the ending that would most likely happen. You know, nothing's really terribly resolved yet um, except for the love of that family. Like that's mm-hmm. what's been resolved. Mm-hmm. And, and the fact that they're, you know, they're, they're willing to help each other out. And, and I think that ending to me, was the perfect ending and and i appreciate that they threw the wedding in there as a yes of course they're going to get married you know we're not entirely heartless and not showing you this but it you know it makes it a note to say time has passed and you know people know at this point that the that, that it's a gay couple and um so to me i just i just have to say that the ending was so well done um i i loved that ending I'm going to counter on that a little bit, if that's okay. Um, sure. I I felt like, okay, I felt like the wed- the wedding part was kind of just thrown in last second. I'm glad they did it, but I, f- I felt like even though at the very ending it was a little abrupt, I felt like I felt like the ending. I don't feel like it, there was as much of a, a you know a good clean ending at the end. I mean, yeah, everybody had it come to like the situation had kind of resolved. I almost felt like there needed to be a little bit more. That's, and I'm glad they threw the wedding in. Because, that's the point I'm making, though, is that the, there's no resolution. And I liked that. So I and can my see counter is like I, I don't know yeah. if I like that. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I completely agree. And that's what that's what I'm saying. Like There is no resolution there. I mean, at, at the where the movie officially ended, like there was no resolution. Well, Real resolution. Okay. Other, other. Maybe. Well, there is. There's resolution within the family, and I mentioned that. But yeah. right. But I'm not. I'm not saying the family dynamic necessarily. If you look at it from just a narrative perspective, um, the conflict is around the lie, and the resolution is around the truth. Mm-hmm. So when the truth comes out, and you know, figuring out how to get out of the club without you know him getting photographed and stuff like that, uh, is just kind of a byproduct. It's not really yeah. the ending. The true ending is when the lie is resolved and the truth is out there and everybody has to yes. deal with it. And so yes. because of that, I think that's the, that's what I get the resolution from the rest mm-hmm. of it. seems like, uh, it seems like two gag setups, right? The escape from the thing seems like, a, well, it's a kind of a double gag setup for, for the escape. First it's Gene Hackman and drag. Um, and then second is which was the, enjoyable by the way <laughs> okay <laughs> okay that's a scary drag queen <laughs> uh, he was he was <laughs> <laughs> i didn't realize how big of a guy he is he's like a linebacker <laughs> yeah, he's huge 
<laughs> and uh, and then also the 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 quip from the driver, you know, not in a million year, years, lady, you know, as he yeah. comes off. That's great. That's that's just a great gag. And then of course the wedding setup was just a visual gag between these two aisles. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, and I I think the, I think those two scenes are in there for basically this is a joke we have to do. Like we just have yeah. to do this because I think the resolution was much earlier. Yeah, I I, I, I think I agree with that. Yeah, I I loved. I am so glad they did because that did make it me, fulfill me a little bit more um, right. that they did do the wedding scene. Because if they had not done that, I would have. I think I would have felt a little weirder about the ending, even though I, you know, like I said, I counter John a little bit of it being a perfect ending. Though I didn't think it was a bad ending at all, you know. And then it kind of satisfied me it, it, a lot more when they threw in the, the wedding thing. And then they were showing like the, oh, I just love that contrast of the, you know, the conservative side looking over it kind of the, you know, at all the drag queens. <laughs> I mean, that part was, yeah, I thought that was pretty hilarious. I was laughing my butt off on that. Yeah. One, but. My favorite and part. It was, was it was worth it, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It, it, it was, I'm glad they did it. Yeah. My favorite part was definitely the redecorating of the house. Just all the drag queens bringing <laughs> yeah. in different outlandish stuff that they think that <laughs> the a conservative family. Yeah, it's just like oh, and the, the giant crucifix and so <laughs> the, those the chairs head. with the straight backs and the narrow like foot table between them. <laughs> yeah. Like that's yeah. as awkward as it possibly could be. And this is, it, I don't know, the commentary on uh, masculinity and conservatism from this movie is just. It's a so delight. Yeah, yeah, it's it's such a delight. And and it and it's aged perfectly. Oh yeah. Like it's it's a oh, fine yeah. wine, that white wine. I mean, that's it's aged so well. But the the amount of of setups in that that whole scene where you're talking about when them them redecorating, you know, the playboys. Yeah. But my favorite part is the books. Is like, you know, he's putting up the the yeah. crucifix and he's like the books came with it and you're like, "Oh, they must be like, you know, books about the Old Testament or something." And then later on it turns out to be Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew. It was so good. <laughs> I was just like, "What?" I lost it. I was just like, "This is hilarious." Uh, uh the bowl gag where they're trying, they're trying to, "Hey, where's my glasses? What's going on?" Oh gosh. Yeah. You got I got a girl. I mean, did you get a girl? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I about lost it. A bunch of boys playing scene. leapfrog. <laughs> <laughs> I about spit out my drink. I was yeah. oh my gosh, it was so good. <laughs> and and Gene Hackman just being completely oblivious to it and just like oh, oh yeah no that's or, a guy it just God, you had or to oblivious know that- to that it's his mom. It not you know not necessarily Nathan Lane. He's like dancing. No no that's gotta be that's a woman. She's such a she's such a fine woman. <laughs> That, so that whole gag, uh, not yeah. I, I really enjoyed that whole the whole part of it when they were you know dancing and all that stuff and his comments on it. Well, Gene um, Hackman, he played the straight. He's he played it st- very straight lace, but boy, playing off of Nathan Lane, and everybody else. He yeah, again, it, it was it the magnification was awesome. of Nathan Lane. Yeah, well, uh, one of my the outtakes are probably wild. Just oh, I'm, everybody I'm breaking. Yeah. You can't even imagine, like you know. Robin Williams on set with Nathan Lane and just cracking everybody up. Um, one of one of my favorite scenes with those two and and Gene Hackman is when uh, Robin Williams goes to the kitchen and he's you know he's getting yeah. drunk basically. He's coming back in and Nathan Lane is talking to Gene Hackman. He's like, "Okay, I can do this. I can do this." He walks in and Nathan Lane's like, "I you know kill the abortion doctors." And I'm just like, "No, what? kill the mothers or kill the he's mothers." The mother. yeah. He, yeah. Gene Hackman's like, "Kill you know kill you know kill the abortion doctors." He's like, "No, no, no." They're just doing their job. What you really need to do is kill the mothers. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> <laughs> just Robin Williams' character is yeah. like, oh, I can't do this. Kills two uh, birds with one stone. Yeah. <laughs> but the subtle, the subtle of, of both Robin Williams and the son getting drunk. Yeah. As they keep taking shots. Cause you're like, you know, a lot of films do stuff like that where they keep taking shots and nothing really happens. But in this film, like they are obviously getting wasted <laughs> and there's so many it's good a, like physical gags with it it's a seafood chowder is this an egg well <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a huevo it's a huevo <laughs> it's a i love how they all reach for the bread after they, they, yeah. take, a, they take a sip they're like i'll go for the bread <laughs> there's so many good gags and one-liners and setups in this film like uh, it's, it's good stuff you know there's if- it's really interesting, like how Robin Williams is um, st- very energetic, but he still um, 
sometimes a little bit more uh, uh, dialed back than you'd see him in normal movies. And yet it's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect, I think the, his portrayal. Yeah. I think what John was saying, I would also put that on Robin Williams. I think that he is letting, like he's making sure that his performance doesn't, because he's supposed to be the, you know, pardon the non pun, but the straight man to uh, Lane's more flamboyant personality. Yeah. And I think that only works if Robin holds it back a bit. You know? Agreed. I, I, and, I agree. I think, I think that's just him, you know, knowing what this character is and how to set up uh, Nathan's character as a contrast. Agreed. And one thing to remind guys, keep your pinkies down. And stuff. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But no, was, it's... <laughs> there's, there's just, it was all just fantastically done. Um, so, oh, oh, good. He's coming back at 20 miles an hour with the parking brake on. Parking I brake on. Lost it. And awesome. I had to take the effing bus. Yeah. <laughs> I, I lost it. Oh, man. It was so good. My, my wife's like, my grandma drives like that. Yeah. <laughs> my grandma dresses like that. <laughs> but no, it was, everything was just, I, I don't know. Like there, there was no point in this movie for me where I was like, no, it's out of place or it doesn't, or it fell flat or it didn't, didn't do well. Like everything in this movie is aged so well, it has just, and it melds so, so well together. Um, just, you know, the, the, con- the conversation and the commentary on hardcore conservatism hasn't changed. Mm-hmm. Um, the s- sad fact is, is, you know, the, the whole underage black prostitute thing that got him in the, the problem in the first place, stuff like that happens. And it, the commentary doesn't, doesn't age like this. I don't know. It just, it just doesn't age well or doesn't age badly. So if we were going to do my, my previous topic that I was thinking of, of films that age badly, like this would never, ever make it in there. Right. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. No, it's yeah. So many, so many good things about this movie that I, I had no idea what I was watching, <laughs> you know, 20 years ago. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't know how how good it was going to be, Josh. <laughs> no, it's it's and I find it funny the movies that do that are better now that back, you know, Josh back then what it was like, I don't know why I would just watch that or, you know, somebody forced me to watch that <laughs> or a situation pushed me into it, you know, which was kind of the what happened with this. Right. You know, I had a it was funny. I, I the one other movie I think of that I kind of got pushed into, I saw it and I still like eh, about it. Uh, a similar situation happened with uh, there, there was a movie called Soap Dish uh, a long time ago, uh, um, and uh, it, it, we, we same thing happened. The movie we wanted to go to was full, and we uh, didn't want wanted to see a movie still, so we saw it and hated it. <laughs> hated it. Whereas this one, we, did, we didn't hate it. We just didn't we just didn't uh, understand it as much. You know mm-hmm. what we were seeing. You know we we were kind of walking into it, you know, without, without knowing any background on it and was kind of like, Oh, okay. Well, what am I watching? <laughs> yeah. I, I came in, I came into it entirely blind other than reading the, reading the IMDB description. I'm like, Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. And came into it entirely blind. So it was well worth it. Good. Awesome. Well, good. I'm, but uh, yeah, it's, I think picture. this rates up there with Dune for me as, as, as favorite podcast movies, like movies that define <laughs> this podcast for me, this and probably Dune are, are there. And, and Dune's just a good movie, not necessarily because it's been a fun pot. It made a fun podcast. It did. It did. No, it, did. Mm-hmm. it was a, a good podcast one. too. And so I, that's, that's where it came from. But Birdcage is just a fantastic movie. Yeah. If anybody hasn't wow. seen a Birdcage out there yet, please see it. Uh, it's on HBO Max. If you go on this bar, we and we, Peacock. <laughs> okay, is it on Peacock? Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, are we done talking? Do we want to go to reviews? I feel like yeah, it's I'm kind good. of winding down a little bit here. I'm good. Yeah, let's do the ratings. All right, let's do it. Um, I'll go first, and then I'll let you guys go, so I can be. Anyways, um, since I'm giving the movies this week, so uh, I'm gonna give my um. My rating is going to be seven out of ten statues with big dongs. <laughs> okay, <Fair>. all right. <laughs> um, so I would I would watch this with my mom, and I would love to see her reaction to this. Um, <laughs> yeah. Knowing her upbringing and her background and conversations we've had, I would just love to sit there and watch my mom watching the film. 
and just to just to see what would happen. Cool. Yeah, and I would get this give this a eight out of ten. It's so much fun. It's seriously a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Yeah, just a good movie. Just a good good uh I was gonna say family movie, but then, but it yeah, does have no, it's definitely rated R. It, like, um, it, it, it's definitely not a family film. I mean, unless, the, fa- film, unless like, the family is of age, I guess I don't know. But it doesn't was it have, actually rated R. I thought it, it yes. was. Oh yeah, it's rated oh, R. Okay. But it's only because of language. There's no. Well, there's language and sexual sex situations and sexual innuendos. So, well, there's plenty of that, but there's also plenty of that in PG-13. You know what? MPA there's plenty of that of naked gun. Oh yeah, so. yeah. We could we could go on and on about the MPA. I, I feel like they got an R rating because it was centered around gay characters. That's what the MPA came across as. Centered around maybe gay characters and uh, you know language. I mean, you know, even now you can what drop two f bombs and still get a PG-13. Well, not most if you're, of the time. Not if you don't pay the MPAA the right amount of money. Well, there's that too. But anyway. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Anyways. Now we're going to be censured by the MPA. Thanks, Craig. <laughs> okay. Luckily, they don't rule This YouTube. podcast yeah. is rated R. It's our first <laughs> podcast we've ever rated, and we've rated it R. <laughs> Are we going to get canceled off YouTube? Is that what you're saying? I mean, no. I mean, <laughs> I would think there's bigger channels than us to go after first. No, there definitely is that. <laughs> Me and my 65 people. <laughs> yeah. That are subscribed. Uh, two of them are you guys. <laughs> yeah. All right, Josh. What are your, what are your picks? Hey. So going off. So for next week or this next month, I should say, uh, we are uh, talking about. If you didn't hear last week uh, about uh, espionage movies this month, and I am the first one to pick espionage movies. So here we go, guys. Here's my picks. Uh, number one, do you know who you're sitting next to? Number two, do you know that crime is only skin deep? Number three, do you really know who you are? Uh, I like one that's sitting next to. Okay. Hmm. Skin deep isn't too bad either. Yeah, let's go with skin deep this time if you don't mind. Okay. All right. Cool. That was the one I hoping you're picking gonna pick actually. But the first one would have been good. The first one, do you know who you are sitting next to? Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Okay. It, okay. And it was I'm glad almost, we didn't get that one. Huh? I said I'm glad we didn't get that one then. He, it was almost like uh, <laughs> another Brad Pitt movie actually called um yeah, Alibi. Uh it's where he, him and his wife was a. Uh, his, he finds out his wife is a, a, a Russian spy. Hmm. Um, anyways, but I switched it because I wanted a comedy to Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Okay. Uh, number three is the original or uh, Born Identity. Okay. Which I do love. But number two is, do you know that crime is only skin deep? It's Inception. Okay. okay. Yeah. Corporate espionage. And- Corporate espionage. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a heist film, film too. <laughs> and it's What's a heist that? film, yeah. <laughs> John's favorite. No, I don't mind heist so films. We have, let me, we let me done get that out of the way. <laughs> yeah, let me get this out of the way. I, I enjoy a good heist film. But Matrix as a heist film and a crappily done heist film was not good. It, it's it's like heists have to be done really well or else they suck for me. Like there's no mediocre heist film. There is either a really good heist film or a heist film that shouldn't be made. Yeah. Well, I always, right. and I'll be honest with you, this is one I've been trying to get on here. And I think, I don't know what, I know I tried to get on this on here once other time. Yep. And stuff like that. So I'm like, huh. And I always like to throw a sci-fi one on there. So I was like, I'm putting a, what sci-fi come up? And I saw Inception when I saw the list. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's totally there. <laughs> uh, anywho. Perfect. I am excited to talk about this movie and uh, why do I feel up? like we've talked about this movie? I think we've talked about this movie many times over my table. Yeah. Inception. Yeah. Oh yeah. We totally have. Yeah. We just never talked about it on the podcast. All right. Stuff. That's where the deja vu is coming from. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, the matrix is being reset. For I was gonna a say, heist. Do They're we gonna need to look at mind. the list? <laughs> 
I mean, I have the list. I, I, I was going to say, I don't think no, I no. remember seeing it on We've the list. We've done it already. We've done it already. We've done Inception already? Yeah, we, yeah, have we did Inception. Inception. It was back when we did Thrillers. Oh, damn it. It was right before The Fury of a Patient Man. Oh, you're kidding gosh, me. you're right. I didn't no, see that on my Inception. list. So we have to choose one of the other two. Yeah. So Mr. Person. and Mrs. Smith, yeah. which is no, what John wanted Mr. first. No. <laughs> okay. I know. Do you really not okay. like that movie? I so hate we're doing... that movie. Oh, I love that uh, But movie. see, that would be great to talk about because, you know, he loves oh, it. You hate it. Heart. And I'm, I'm on the... Uh, How about this one? How about this one? How about this? Let's go with my original one. Well, I thought we were... Well, I mean, your other choice is Born Identity. Yeah, I'm okay, okay with the Born Identity. We can identity. do that. I was going to say, yeah. we go with my original the, one of Mr. and Mrs. This, Smith. This but, is the original Born Identity, right? Yes, the original. Okay. Do you really know who you are? The original Born Identity. Yep. Yep. Okay. So Take the it. 1988 Born Identity. Yes, and I need to look <laughs> at my bliss better next time. 1988? Yeah, the Born Identity is a 1988 mystery action thriller. We're not talking. Are, are we talking about the one with Matt Damon? Matt Damon. He's talking about the one with Matt Damon. Okay. Well, when you said the original Born Identity, there is a film of Born Identity before the two thousand and two. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I honestly, yeah. I thought it was a book or, uh, before that. Okay. Now I'm now I'm a little less excited because it's like, <laughs> oh, this is gonna be interesting. But no, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do Born Identity too. I'm good with that. Cool. But yeah, you gotta. Got to do your research, Josh, telling us it's the original. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> I knew what you were talking about, Josh. You weren't going to pick the 1988 version. No. Nor did I know it existed. <laughs> yeah, neither did I. It's got Richard Chamberlain in it, who I don't know who he is. I know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Uh, I'm going to look up Wikipedia real quick to see if I can catch everybody on it. Well, I didn't know it was Richard Chamberlain. All I knew is there was a Born Identity before that because it's huh? one I've refused to watch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Okay. All Born right. Identity 2002. Born identity it is. With Matt Damon. I swore Not we Hamlet. talked about Inception. I swore we had. So yeah. I I hadn't. Remember. Glad I. I checked. mean, we're getting to the we're getting to the point that we've done so many movies at this point. Oh, uh, we got plenty to go. We just gotta. We oh gotta yeah, dig no. a little deeper. I yeah. I mean, I've got a list too, but I, I didn't see it on my list. I need to look a little harder next time. Apparently. I, I can send you my list. I, I've got most of your list, but I don't have, I know I don't have the whole entire thing. Yeah. Anyways. All right, guys. Uh, all right. Thanks for the podcast. This was a great one. Uh, mm. Good movie. Thanks for that crit. And uh, we'll be watching Born Identity next time. And to everybody out there listening, thank you for supporting our channel. And, uh, as always, may you be excellent to each other and live long and prosper from all of us here at Josh's House of Nerd. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. For more nerdy awesomeness, please like and subscribe and check out our other nerdy videos.